Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. Well, today I'm going to do a super long tutorial only because it is every side of this card plus an envelope. Now, my daughter-in-law needed a shower card and the theme had to be pink and black with the Eiffel Tower and Paris, Paris, thrown in there. I tell you what, and so I went around my craft room and hauled out everything that I could think that was Paris uh, themed, like this 12 by 12 pack. I mean, can you get anything any sweeter than the Eiffel Tower in pink? And I wanted to have this um, kind of like, you know, when you walk down Paris and you see all of these quaint shops. I haven't been there. I'm just imagining this. <laughs> yeah, it's more like walk down my block <laughs> look at the houses <laughs> but i'm gonna go into you know thinking i'm in petty and all i could think of is when the moon hits your eyes like a big a pizza pie that's samadhi yeah that's a song i could think of isn't that crazy does that go back a thousand years but when i think of paris i guess that's what i think of <laughs> don't judge me people <laughs> Yeah, so here we go. We're going to make this gorgeous card. I can't wait. And I had this Stampin' Up! set of this gorgeous script. I mean, everything just came together. I had to put my foam piece underneath because if you're using a large stamp, especially a 6x6, six six, and it's on a wood base, you need to have some boing boing room. So putting some foam underneath your paper will really give you a great image. Now, I was also able to use gold, like gold paper. Here we go. I'm just showing you what I picked out. That is for the envelope. Yes, it's wonderful. Can you believe it? An email. This is crazy when I do my voiceovers. But I'm going to move right along because it's a long tutorial. All for you folks that love my long tutorials. This is dedicated to you. So I put the gold reflections detailed embossing powder. This is from Michaels. So uh, if you're looking for nice gold, like a rich, rich gold, that's where I got this. And then I'm going to heat set it and watch how beautiful this is. And off to the left, you can see I have that uh, eight by eight piece of gold paper uh, pad that my friend Tina gave me. Thank you, Tina. I'm going to be able to use it. Oh yeah, I was going with all the stops here. I had gold for Patty, and I you should see all the stamps I was able to get. Some of my older block stamps, the wooden stamps, and I love to use rubber stamps as well. They give you the perfect image. So here we go. I am on the way to create this card. Now I wanted to have a tag because of this stamp I had. Wait till you see it. It has the Eiffel Tower and the stamps and traveling. The whole yada yada line and it fit perfectly look at that stamp I just love it and I'm pretty sure that's a Michael stamp too <laughs> back in the day oh yeah you should have seen me going around my craft room you know trying to find everything to do with Patty Paris oh yes and yeah so gold again on my tags these are just normal tags you get at your stationery store business tags I bought a box of them you know, 422 years ago, and I found them in my stash, and now I'm just making sure I get all the powder off, and then we're going to heat set that, and uh, this just came together, and I was able to use my oxide inks, and I wanted to use a bright pink, and I was able to do that with two of the oxide inks. I used the smoky gray and this pink right here. I'll leave it on my blog because I don't want to get out of my chair to go find what color it is, but tell me what is this vivid? I think it's pickled raspberry, but I'm not too sure. And it could be one of the new pinks, I don't know. So you want, I, I chose to go with the corners and then fill it in with the smoky gray up there. Look at that color, that beautiful, beautiful gray. I, oh, it's fabulous. Oh yeah, I'm getting into this. And that heartfelt creation die is at the top that's going to go on the card. I already had that in my stash and I take out a whole lot of dies. I love dies. So I went to pick out all of the more like filigree and freeform dies that had hearts and love and 
all of that to go with this card and I put them off to the side in case I need them. I don't want to keep getting off my chair and going having to look for something that you know my mind brings to me that I want to incorporate into my cards. So I just put them along the side and yeah I love this smoky gray. I just I don't know what it is. I just really love this combination in the oxide inks. Oh I'm going to show you after I throw it all over the place. Is it picked raspberry? Hoo -hoo. Yeah, I'm moving my light. And uh, this is a beautiful combination to do Paris. And then I also stamp, I put this tag through my Stampin' Up! embossing folder that had the script. So not only did I have the Stampin' Up! stamp, the 6x6 stamp, I had the embossing folder with this gorgeous script. I mean, could you get any better than this? I don't think so. I mean, I was just in the zone doing this card and I wanted to glue this to the back of that tag. I want it to be super thick. You know me with everything being super thick. Then I'm going to add clear embossing powder to both of them. Um, well, first I should finish that one, right? <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm thinking to myself, there's something missing on this tag, isn't there? Like uh, pink and brown? I don't think so. Back to the smoky gray. And using these oxide inks, I know a lot of people like there's, um, you know, 50-50. If you like them, you love them. And if you don't, you don't. But I th I love that chalky look. I love the, the way it blends into each other, just like you're working with butter. And it is. It's that creamy. And it doesn't, it has a look all to itself. And that's what I like too. Everything having its own identity. I think it's beautiful. So I'm going to now heat set that, put my clear embossing powder back, throw that off to the side. <laughs> you should have seen my island when I'm doing this. Look what we get to work with, okay? I have this big Tim Holtz glass mat. It's packed. I have a huge island. It's packed. I mean, I've got, what have I got there? Six, what do I have there? It's not what do I got there. Come on, Carol. So what do we have there? At least six by six inch piece of space. <laughs> to do my creating <laughs> yeah what's with that you know I remember Tim Holt saying oh you know you get this big mat and then you have your own space and everything goes around it not my world <laughs> I'll cover anything that's flat yeah that's it I'm just covering it up and uh, as long as I have room for whatever I'm working on I'm pretty cool with that I'm shoving the junk to the side oh yeah make it all look nice and neat it doesn't. It's just like, <laughs> don't ask me what I'm doing there. I think I'm just kind of having a drink of Coca-Cola, getting myself in the mood. I'm going to heat set that so it's not over top of my mat so that doesn't curl up. Yeah, I had a lot of mishaps on this uh, creation. Yes, I spilt my uh, liquid Versamark and I, I mean, it all went back in. I was good with that, but you know, when you get all this stuff all the way around you. Then I made my card base too small over to the left there. So I had to redo that. And that's, you know, don't get discouraged when you're doing stuff like that. If you're moving, uh, if you're just creating, you don't have something in your mind, you're just going with it. Those things happen. It doesn't matter because you have a card base for another card. Just let it go. Let it go. Make another one. Now I'm going to put one on top of the other as soon as it's cool. And I think it's cool just looking at it. Look at that stamp. It has the clock, has the Eiffel Tower, it has the script. Just gorgeous. So now, um, you know I love working with this LDRS Creative Die. I have it out. I mean, this screams Paris to me with the lace and the beauty of it. So I grabbed the two colors. This is the theme colors that I'm going with for my daughter-in-law's shower card. And um, yeah, and then I darkened it up with a little black. I found the gray just, uh, you know, kind of didn't have an identity there. It kind of was just off to the side. So I took some black, uh, what's that called? It's that hybrid ink called Ink on Three. And it's nice and black, look at that. And that's going to go on the card. And that's how I create. I just find all the elements. If I use them, I use them. If not, I put them aside and use them another time. No biggie. 
I think I like having theme cards. Like when somebody tells me they would like or asks me, they don't tell me. But somebody asks me for a card and a matching envelope and they give me the colors, the theme to go with. I, I kind of like that then just sitting down and you thinking up something. This way I have been forced into the corner <laughs> to create a theme with Paris pink and black. I mean, that's easy. And this script, this Stampin' Up! 6x6 wooden stamp set with the um, script, this is the most beautiful script I think I have seen. And I bought this years ago. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for five years now, I think. And I bought this from Stampin' Up! when I started this journey. And it was the best investment as far as a script set. Um, you know, I have a few of them, but this is six by six and it's really nice. I tried to get it in the middle the best I could, but, you know, making the two sides even. But the great thing about this is I'm going to have that LDRS Creative um, die cuts. I'm going to do one in the black and one in the pink and black. I don't want things too uniform. I'm one that likes to have, you know, everything... Um, matchy matchy and here I'm trying to force myself to undo that and uh, you know put this yeah I'm just squishing my hands across there and I, it's nice to have this big sheet of paper that I can just pour the powder and I always try to make sure I put the lid on especially these past this card I worked on it for I think or I think not fur for a couple of days I worked on it a couple of days and uh, off and on, off and on, and it was very, very enjoyable, you know, and it's not a difficult card. It doesn't have a ton of elements. It is just when you find those um, stamps and dies in your craft room, then you set them aside, your mind just goes with it, and I knew this was going to be the front. Now, may I stress this? There's the gold. I'm going to have the gold as a border. You can see how I was putting this together. The gold print, the gold in the background. I love the, these. Uh, my friend Tina, like I said, sent me gold and silver. And when I get <laughs> to it, I'm going to send her Heartfelt Creation collection. She likes um, sunflowers, and I have the sunflower collection. So that's we did the trade-off thing, you know. And, uh, yeah, so... I'm going to use the gold, and this was so nice because I got to incorporate gold in this card. You know how I always try to do some bits of gold in each one of my cards, no matter what the creation is. Now, I went back in the edit here, and I slowed this down to just a normal speed because I wanted to show you that I took the tag, and I went around the edges with the, um, Simon says, stamp black and the gray mixed together and I went around the edges. So I'm just kind of cleaning up here in slow mo. Can you believe how slow this is? And I made sure that I went around the edges on this. I distressed some of the card edges and some I didn't. So if you see me distressing, uh, that's good. I tried to make it uh, you know, as vintage as I could. And this is the, that's why I slowed that down. This is the heartfelt creation die that was in the gold, that beautiful filigree corner die. I love it. So I did that in the, in the gold and I set it off. I did that with the Xyron. And because of, you know, I have to make sure everything is really going to stick. So this six inch it's five or six inch roll of my double-sided tape worked out perfect and then I had this one inch that I went along I'm just going to trim the edges and you're going to know this is going to stay put but I must say if you have an ATG gun that tape in an ATG gun is as sticky as this I love both of them and uh I love the mirror image in the gold, especially if you're working and you don't have your face on or your hair done. <laughs> surprise, surprise, all of a sudden there's your head. Hello. Yeah, get that on there fast. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh dear. So the Xyron machine, this little one inch or no, it's two inch Xyron, it's perfect for little elements such as this. You just slide it through and easy peasy. I take all the little, you know, balls of goobers. I get them out of there just by rolling my fingers across them. Then I'm going to take my Xyron machine and yes, I was on empty, so I had to refill it. This is how easy it is. Snap that thing in there, boop, turn it over and run it through. That's how easy this little Xyron is at Michael's, this two inch. You have to have this, I mean, really. For sentiments, for this, take your um, bone folder, make sure you go over that because that's going to adhere the, the actual sticky glue to your die cut image. So that makes it nice and easy. If I forget to do that, I do have much more mess to clean up. Yeah, but when I do that, and then I just put it on the other side. Isn't that beauteous? I love it. I just run my finger, not heavy, just lightly over to grab those little sticky parts. Makes a nice little ball and then flick it in your garbage. Now, I went into my apothecary where I have all my ribbons and I found this, I think it's three tier roses, a black, beautiful ribbon. And that die was missing the little uh, ceramic ball on top of the Eiffel Tower. I got that for 10 cents at Michael's in the clearance bin. And I bought that at least four years ago, not knowing if I ever would use an Eiffel Tower. I just set it aside for 10 cents or 25 cents. It wasn't very much. And, um, yep, yeah, I hauled it out of my stash. You'll see it's nice and clean. It's a beautiful image of an Eiffel Tower. I didn't pay very much, which is super duper cool, too. And we are going to set out to now make the black in the background. Black behind gold with this black and pink theme with the smoky gray there. Oh, this was heavenly. I just enjoyed working this card. Now, when I made the bottom portion, remember you need that two inches. Whatever width your uh, ribbon is, if you're going to do this, uh, I think it was maybe one and a half inches I needed to add to the bottom so that my ribbon would stay on. This is where you want to make sure your uh, hot glue gun is on because I did put running like runner across the bottom just for a little bit of sticky, but I made sure I put hot glue on this because, yeah, I'm not going to risk it coming off, especially if it's sliding in and out of this envelope. It's going, you know, as a shower. Here we go, I just took my Martha Stewart scissors. I love the look of distressing your edges with scissors. I always forget to do it and I use my distress tool. But if you want a beautiful, like I mean a real distressed edge, your scissors are the number one tool to grab. Yeah, before they ever had these little distress tools, scissors was the way to go. So I'll put this up. Always making sure, that's what I said before, your script is readable. And on this, it you have to find the capital letters. Like I look for an H or an F or um, a P. I try to find a letter that because, you know, it's, I can't, it's, I think it's even French. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, you want to make sure before you start sticking things down that your script is in readable form that your letters are going in the right direction. So now I'm going to cut off the next piece that I can make my own base, right? You know I always make my own base because the cards are, uh, this one is, I don't know, it might be seven by eight. I can't remember there. This is a fair size card and I always have to remember that I'm going to distress the edges so add a little tiny bit to the measurement when you're measuring it down then I'll take my score tool and I'll score it with a gusset always remember to put that gusset in there you know one gusset is perfect for this because I wasn't putting anything major on the inside but I like the fact that it has that little bit of room it's only two lines on your scoreboard Score it and don't use your bone folder to crease it. 
I like it when you don't do that. Uh, it doesn't make any jagged edges, yet it gives you that nice smooth look of a gusset, of a crease in your um, card. And now I have to decide, okay, I have to cover that gold, right? I didn't know whether to slide this down and just put it on the edges, but I thought, you know what, I'll add something to the top. I'm not going to worry about that. I added some little quarter inch um, double-sided tape here, and then I am going to seed it. And I'm, I'm trying to think here if I did it on the, I must have, yeah, there we go. I'm going to push it down just a bit. You can see there, it's not right up to the top. Um, yeah, I'm making some major decisions here on how I am going to make this fold uh, perfectly. And there you have it. I guess I went with putting it up to the bottom line of the score and then seating it down with my bone folder. And then I had to decide, okay, what are we going to do with the inside of the card? I'm going to do all of the elements here, the front, the back, and the both portions of the inside of the card. So now I put my um, sticky double-sided tape on the bottom, but I had my heat tool there and I'm going to put this gorgeous ribbon, this rose ribbon with the tool. It has the tool that comes down on the bottom and the top that gives it that real, you know, French feel to this card. I really was happy, yeah, with this card. And uh, Hunter's here today, yes. he. I'm doing my voiceover, can you believe it? And he is being so nice and quiet in the next room for me so that I can finish this voiceover for you. And uh, here I'm just cutting it off. You can see the tool on there. Isn't it pretty? And there, look at that. It's starting to come together. And then I knew I had to you incorporate that heartfelt creation uh, die, that beautiful filigree die. I love that. And it's going to go on the top portion. And I'm going to use, oh yes, I took this up. Remember I just had the tape runner on the top? I did not want to risk this coming apart, so I lifted it up. And if you can lift it up, that means you need to add some more glue. So I put a strip of hot glue under there, and I made a fold back down, and we're going to start over. I had the vellum. I was thinking of putting this die, this heartfelt creation die, over top of vellum, and then I changed my mind. Here, I had to run it, well, I didn't have to, but I ran it through my Xyron machine, and... Um, I think I had to run it through the 5 inch if I'm right. Yeah, because that is a little bit more than uh, 2 inches. And now I'm going to seat that down all by itself. I was just taking my pokey tool and taking some of the glue out of the beautiful um, holes that this created in this image. The cuts. It sounds better than holes, doesn't it? And now I'll just get those goobers off. And here we go. This just puts a smile on my face when things start coming together. Oh yeah, I'm liking it. So I have my uh, tiny, tiny, mini, mini, mini pearls out. I like to add pearls if I'm doing something that has a nice romantic feel to the card. Adding pearls is just, you know, a little extra something, something. It's like having a real pretty dress on and putting your pearls on and a nice pearl bracelet. Oh, it just adds to the ambiance, I think. So here I'm cleaning off my pin. I need to use this to get some of the inside glue off. Then back to the ATG gun. This is my half inch, the purple ATG gun I got at Michael's. And I got it at, I think it was $10 in the clearance bin. I watch for things like this. I have two half inch ATG guns and now this one. There's the goobers I was talking about I need to take out. And uh, this has a few scratches on this sheet, but you're not going to see it because I am adding something over top, so that didn't worry. And that's where you want to use your things that have uh, some imperfections on it so that, um, yeah, it, uh, it's covered. So, yeah, I'm just messing with it, trying to see what I'm going to do there making sure everything is clean. I may have to grab a piece of paper. I always get, even if it's black, I don't want to get anything on it. So here you go. And I'm going to measure out with a pencil. This is going to be uh, 
the white sheet that I use over top of this. I don't have the card here because my daughter-in-law took it to her shower that she went to and so I have nothing like to look on or to measure it. Uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of guessing at things here. I'm pretty sure I used the the uh, the big stamp, I'm stuttering here, the beautiful script stamp on this. Uh, again and then heat set it with the gold yep there comes my foam piece this foam piece that I ordered I'm going to try to find it for you I was able to cut it in thirds it was that big so that I can fit it on my work surface and I get a good good crisp image when I use the foam behind my wooden stamps so now I'm going to use the same recollection gold I'm sticking to this flat gold I do like that opposed to having a real shiny although you know it says it's uh, when you look at it, it looks like a flat gold but once you heat set it and here I'm going to add an element in the middle see how I missed that little bit of script in the middle of this uh, paper but that's fine because if you're adding elements just make sure the outside edge and it was even slightly crooked if if you're looking at that it is going towards yeah it's going towards the left and I was going to redo this but then I thought Carol you're you're going to add so much on this you're not even going to notice it I just wanted the script and isn't it beautiful and then once again look at your capital letters to make sure it is readable you don't want to have it you know get all that glued down and look at it and I've done this before I'm speaking from experience and notice that um, it's upside down. Yeah, that's a nightmare. Now here is what I decided. Okay, I decided not to put stuff around it because of it being crooked. I remember now. So I took out this Spellbinder set. I love this set. I don't use my Spellbinder dies that often. And once I started, uh, you know, going through them, I thought, oh, I got to go back to making more of this style card. The more vintage shabby chic card. I ran it through my die cutting machine and it was beautiful. This way it doesn't matter if you, you know, stamp it crooked. Just put a little bit of tape there and wait till you see how beautiful this looks on black cardstock. And it's black cardstock from Michaels, 110. It's about 200 pounds. I'm not kidding. It's the thickest black cardstock I've ever worked with. And it's just at Michaels. Then I'm going to poke all the holes through and wouldn't you know it as I, I wanted to tell you this it didn't go through on the first run I needed to have a shim but using spellbinder dies they're so intricate they're so beautiful it just slipped you know it just seemed to lock itself back on there I didn't have to do another one it just went right in the areas it needed to I put a shim on it and ran it through and it was beautiful all right you, you have to go to your punches when you're doing a, a card like this. And I have so many of them because back in the day, that's what you did. Before you, I even considered dies, I just fell in love with all of these punches. And this is the Martha Stewart heart punch. And I took the black card stuck. I only needed three hearts going across, but I made sure that I, you know, punched out an extra just to have an extra. I don't know why I was doing it because you don't want to make any impressions on that gold sheet. Uh, I'm Hopefully I put it aside, but isn't this the prettiest die? It snaps up for storage. It doesn't take that much room. And it is one of my prettier punches, I have to say. I'm so glad I invested in this one. And oh, I guess I add another one, but you don't need it. I only needed three across. And uh, I guess, you know, it's better to write on safe than sorry. Now, the thing you have to do here, I want to stress this, is make sure you press this down, seeing the it's in order from top to bottom. If you, may, you know, you can be a little off, but not too much, because you need to have three of these hearts, and you don't want them, you know, crooked. So however you work this, this was sheer thankfulness that it worked out for me. I didn't have to do it again. I just eyeballed it and I looked at the punch. I looked at the already pre-punched area and look at 
you couldn't get any sweeter than that. It just came together. But maybe sometimes you have to measure the, the actual punch and put a little tick mark on it to see where you have to go back and seat the bottom, so the top and bottom match. I'm going to cut it out, giving myself a little bit of room in case I have, it's better to not be, you know, have extra room than to be too short. And then you're going to have to add gold paper underneath because you were short. Now, this is where my liquid, uh, I wanted to see, see how it just kind of got lost there. So I took out my liquid Versamark. You really do need liquid Versamark in your stash. I will leave a link to it to, for purchasing it. And the micro brushes. All you do, uh, because this is intricate, you cannot put a Versamark pad on here. It would be all over the place. And I wanted to have the inside of those hearts gold. So you have two options. You can either punch it out with gold paper and then cut around it and glue it on. That's way too much work. And, you know, you, you risk the liquid glue trying to get it on there. So get your liquid Versamark, get your uh, micro brush, and just start painting it on the inside of those hearts. So you have six hearts. And wait till you see the difference. I showed you this in the edit. Doesn't it get lost? Even though it's pretty, it gets lost in there. Now, um, so I'm going to take it and grab my liquid first mark, like I said, my micro brush, and we are going to paint it on. There you go. Look at that. And the top and the bottom of the die cut went perfectly inside the heart. Things were just coming together. I'm going to distress the edges. That takes away from any measurement imperfection if you have the uh, scissor, if you go down and distress it. Yeah. You can distress it for the look or distress it because you're distressed and you need to get it even. Just put a little bit of, uh, run your scissors across there. So here we go. Um, I'm going to add, I'm trying to think of why, yeah, I put that aside. I'm looking at it. I'm in the decision mode here. And I, it just, I guess it just hit me after this about the gold script and having gold on the inside of the hearts. That's what I was trying to figure out. How am I going to do this? And then the liquid Versamark came into play with my micro brush. The thing about this, I'm going to, I didn't show you doing all of them. I'll show you just one. I'll zoom right up so you can see how I uh, decided to do this. Isn't it pretty? So you just go inside your liquid Versamark bottle, take your micro brush, go over all of the, you know, the lines here in the center, then take your, the same color, you know, I wanted to go with that theme, just run with the same gold, and a piece of paper, and do it separately. I did this, I put the powder on and then I heat set it. Then I went on to the second one. I don't want to risk my hand going in it, my elbow, my clothes, something falling on it. <laughs> you never know, right? So one at a time and wait till you see how pretty this is. I didn't even, you know, after I did this one, I did put some powder on it so that I didn't have any stray little flicks of gold on my heart image. But I didn't on this one and, it, you know, I was fortunate. Uh, that it didn't get all over the place. So you want to be mindful to put a little bit of powder on it before you put your um, your embossing powder. And there you see the two of them. I think I had them all finished. Yes. Now doesn't that make a difference? Then you put that on the black and it just pops off. Now I'm going to put some runner. See? Isn't that beautiful? It really is. I thought I'm so glad I had liquid Versamark. I, I, yeah, I grabbed my half inch, no, my quarter inch ATG, and I love it. Look at how beautiful. You could uh, use tape runner, whatever you have. I didn't want to use liquid on top of that uh, gold because it's kind of a slippery gold. So I thought that the, yeah, get all the strays off there. And there you have it. I just think this is so crazy pretty. And however you see, yeah, can you see how it's stuck? 
I wanted to move it a bit, it would not come up. That ATG gun uh, glue is fantastic. So it wasn't off, it was fine, you know. Sometimes you don't want to play around with mesh. There's where it fell over and I'm putting it all. I'm not wasting any of this. I'm just sopping it up with my finger, putting it back in. And it worked out perfectly, look at that, yes. Accidents happen. And if you don't give yourself enough space and you have all your stuff all over, this is just bound to happen. So I thought I'd throw that in for you, cleaned it up, and then we're going to go back to designing. I hope I zoom out for you here. Yes, that's the beauty of editing, isn't it? Now, I have to seat that beautiful script die with the spell binders in here, making sure that the bottom portion is even with the heart on the top, like both of them are even. And then I'm going to take the Versamark. I'm just, I just had that black ink holding down the image there, just so that it was, it would stay in frame for you. It wasn't sliding all over. I took my 40 pound Stampin' Up vellum. This has lasted me for years. It's so super thick. I took my Eiffel Tower stamp, put it on the foam. Remember, this gives you a nice image. I forgot to put powder on it, so I did have a little bit here and there from tipping it back and forth. You don't want to tip side to side. But I was able to clean it up with my fingers. It worked out perfectly. Uh, I put the gold powder on, heat set it, and making sure that I took the heat tool off and on. See how you see that powder just off to the left side? But I took a paintbrush, I think, and took it off. Yeah, there we go. And it really did. You couldn't tell. So it was nice I didn't have to restamp this. I heat set it. And then I'm going to die cut it with the, with the smaller spell binder die that matches that large one that you see in the, with the script on it. So, and like I said, when you put that down, make sure you're looking at the script. That the letters are not upside down. That would be horrid. And there's the next size to this die set. Um, this has the inside element too, like you, you can cut it so that it cuts out, which is wonderful, you know, that you just get the, around the frame part, get those flowers on there. If you want just that, you don't want to have the card stuck behind it. You can do that with this die. I'm just picking out the guts. I made sure that I put a piece of paper over top of it. So I had a shim, but when you're working with vellum, one pass would do it. You don't have to do two. It was just because the black, the white cardstock is super thick. I work with the 140 pound cardstock, so it is thick to die, and I should always remember that I need to put a shim on there just to be on the safe side because, uh, yeah. Uh, here I'm putting my, I'm using a lot of Stampin' Up products here, but this is my glue dots, my Stampin' Up glue dots, and it's my last of the glue dot packages. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to start buying glue dots at uh, the big box store online because I have been using these glue dots now for about five years. I bought a ton of them when they went on sale of the boxes and now I'm just running out. That's pretty cool that, uh, you know, once I see a sale and it's a pretty good sale and I'm able to order more, I try to do that. So now let's seat it down. I just put them on the back of the Eiffel Tower and it'll stay nicely. You have a chance to kind of move it around and uh, it's just plain pretty. I'm gonna take, you know, all of the little dots out of there. I make sure, oh yes, here's where I told you. When I made the fold um, and I put the double-sided tape on the outside, you're going to have a little bit on the inside. So it may carry some of your little die pieces off of your work surface when you open it up. So I just took them out. Here's where the pearls come in handy. I put one medium sized pearl right in the center. I didn't put any more on this. Now you could go around all those dots with your mini pearls. See those teensy weensy ones? I got those at Michael's. But I decided just to go through three of the elements. I'm zooming right up there. Isn't that script gorgeous? And uh, these are, this is a package that you get at Michael's with these. It's a round circle, I think with 400 mini uh, pearls. I love them. They're so tiny. And then I just added 
them to each element of the LDRS Creative die, and uh, it just adds a little bit of something to this card. I like it. It's not too much. It's not too big. It just is subtle, and I like that look. I like detail. I like the subtlety of adding little elements that are in your stash so you can get rid of it. And uh, yeah, we're going to move forward. It's so pretty. And the funny thing is I put four, which I generally don't do, but it worked out nicely. And make sure when you get up to that, whatever image you use on the top, if you have another image, put the pearl where the other pearls are that you can see. You can see I need one there uh, just to matchy-matchy. And there you have it. That so far is the front. Now we have to zoom out. Hopefully I did zoom out and we have to put some tape on the back. I'm just making sure, oh I did already, that the top and the bottom flower of this die matches on the punch uh, image. So the top and bottom is even. Yeah, I really like it. And you could add pearls here as well. Actually, I did. I was talking about on the white cardstock, you could add a pearl all the way around it, but I chose not to. I just did the top and bottom of just this section right here. The ones that loop around and connect the hearts. That's where I added it. That's it. Now, if you want, you can go all the way around all the hearts, but I think it would have been too much. I think you, you just want subtlety. You just want things to be subtle. You don't want to over-decorate something on a card that's where the line you know there's like a little line there somebody asked me in my comment last night uh when do you know enough's enough <laughs> i never know when enough's enough i guess when i run out of space on my project or i look at it and it doesn't uh you know it takes away from the focal point then i know i've done too much you know so the focal point here is the eiffel tower and um, everything else, I'm just picking little things off of that. Then I add a little bit of powder on top of that glue, just so nothing else would stick to it when it was given away. This is another die. I love this die. I'm going to leave it. I don't have it out on the counter here, but I've had these forever. There's two of them I bought, and it's for adding tags or adding um, bookmarks, um, it's just a nice sleeve that you add to your projects and I did it with the gold and it, this is a nice stash one I have that has hearts and this one with the filigree and I think it's beautiful this is the back of the card my daughter-in-law wanted to have a money card so um, I'll show you what I did for that and then um, I wanted to put that it was created especially for you by Carol Held. So I put it on the vellum in black, but I put white embossing powder over top of the black. So it had a black, um, kind of like a ghosting effect underneath, just a tad. I really like the look of this. Then I went to my Stampin' Up! punches. I had the large heart. So I cut around this vellum, punched out the heart, and then I'm going to add this to the card. And because I have added, you know, heart elements in here, it didn't take away, even by putting your name on it, you know. Um, and I made sure I asked my daughter-in-law if it was okay to have, you know, that it was created by me before I gave it to her. And she said yes, of course. And uh, so that's fabulous. So if you um, are watching this, I know she told uh, all of her friends to go on my channel. I want to say hello <laughs> and to the lady that got this for her shower. I really hope you liked it and um, yeah so here we go. I'm going to work on the back. I am oh isn't it always this way you remember to do what you should do at the beginning. This is baby powder that I put in a little chili jar I got at the thrift store and then I put tape over the lid and I poked my own little hole so it didn't come out bountifully. It just came out in little bits. So I put the baby powder on. I put it on my foam pad. I'm going back. Now you want to make sure this is pretty even. I'm pressing down on the foam to get my script image. So pretty. And once again, I'm going to jump in there. Make sure your script is right side up. It is so easy. I have done it before. 
or I've had to start all over because I put it upside down, not looking. So now I'm ever mindful. After you make a few mistakes like that, you kind of smarten up and watch. So I just want to add that little bit of wisdom over and let you know that, you know, it's easy to do if you're not looking for it. So I'll heat set it. I'm going to show you how, oh, this is the beautiful part of creating is when you add the embossing powder and then you heat it up. Look at this. I never get over the beauty of watching powder come alive and have this gold look to it. It's just beautiful. And isn't that script gorgeous? It really is. So I'm going to add this. I'll take my bone fold and make sure I put a nice crease around there. And I'm going to put hot glue. I am not going to risk that coming off either. But I did take my um, applicator that had the pink on there. I didn't add pink. I just used what was on the applicator that I had from the project. And I put it on the inside because you can see around there. Now add one section at a time. So I went from the left. You can see the goobers there. Then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to put it on the bottom section. Then I'll take away this little bit there. Then I'll run the hot glue. I have a detailed glue gun that I got at Walmart here. And uh, I like it because it has a stand. So it makes it easy. And then I'll go back and add it to the, the end. That way you can pull it, push it, make it uh, you know, as tight as you want it. And this is going to be for my tags. Now, after I got this on, I noticed it was a little bit over to the right. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. The only thing you can do is just uh, be happy with what you created and not worry about it. And I'm going to have tags in there, so it's perfect. Now my star form stickers. I have tons of these star form stickers in every kind of design. Black, white, gold. Um, yeah, all of these stickers. I love them. And especially if you're not even on your cards, uh, this is good to get to straighten it up. Here, I'm not going to be able to because it's evident it's a little bit too much on the left, on the right than the left. But when I got the tags in, you couldn't see it. I just put one tag on the, le the left and one in the middle, and it was it was great. You know, I don't think anybody is really going to notice that. And uh, this design in the star form, I'll try to find all the different designs. I have gold in the corners, and I have all different designed corners. The star form stickers come in all different styles. So, uh, yeah, you just look at the pack. And uh, the, I like to look for a pack that has different styles all in one pack. That way I can get a lot of, um, you know, images for... The price and I think they're only two dollars and twenty five cents or two dollars and fifty cents. So here's the tag. I'm making sure that all of the glue is out of there. Remember that we put two tags together. I have the script on one side and I have the Eiffel Tower and the clock on the other side. I put two corners at the top and I'm going to show you what I do when I put these stickers on. I always take my um, glue, my um, oh, I got to think of that. I'll come back to that. But I always put it over top of my pearls and I always put it over top of anything that I don't want to fall off. And um, let me just grab what it is so I can share it with you. It's your glossy accents. Oh, sometimes it just flees your mind. I can't think of it. But I add glossy accents over top of the pearls so that it will drop down and it'll seal it. That's what I do with any pearls I put on there. I put a drop on the top, let that glossy accent glue drip down, and you only want a tiny bit. You don't want it. And I do the same with these stickers. I will add a little touch to every little hole that is on these stickers so that I know the sticker's never coming out. Yes, it does take time, but it is worth it. The last thing you want is to put a sticker down and it be folding in on the corners. Oh, yeah, that would be devastating. So I have a fine tip. 
I poured my glossy accents into this little bottle. It lets out a tiny, tiny portion of the glossy accents and I put it on every pearl. All the pearls you see on the front, on the inside, and I also add it to my corners. So you can see that this corner is much different than the other corner. Okay, I think this is the back of my, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, which side of the card I'm working on. Maybe it's the inside upper flap. And I'm just seating it. Uh, I make sure there's the glossy accents. And here are the stickers. I add the corners. It's such a sweet element. You could put, I always, when I use this particular corner sticker, I always put pearls in that hole. Always. If you go back to any of my tutorials, I add something in there. It, I, it just is begging for a little pearl on there, isn't it? You know? And so I put pearls. I'm pretty sure. Now, yeah, there it is. And it's the tiniest detail pearl. Not a big honking one. A nice tiny one to match the ones on the opposite side. Be mindful of each side you're creating, you know, to make the other side kind of match if you can. You know, and here I'm adding it. These stickers are beautiful. You can't, I can't have enough of them. I just love Starform stickers. And they are sticky, but I'm telling you, when you're handling it, you're every time you touch it, you're taking some of the sticky off. So I just run, like I said, I will add just a tad of the glue, the glossy accents. I'll put a tiny bit. Uh, you won't even see it. I'll go around the edge and honestly you do not see it. I am like, uh, yeah, I'm very careful so that because it'll dry, and you know, on the flat black it'll look shiny. So you want to be very careful when you add the glossy accents. And isn't that pretty? I mean, when you flip that up, I'm going to have one element. Here's the back. I'm just doing a check on how it all looks making sure I'm happy with it. Now I had to have to add the ribbon, I think. I'm going to the ribbon. I went in my stash and I found my beautiful crinkle ribbon, I call it. And I took the same two colors here, the picked raspberry and that beautiful gray, smoky gray in the oxide ink. And look at, I'm just rubbing it, one on the top, kind of the halfway mark. And, um, and then I make sure that I take a, 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 a baby wipe. No, you don't want to take a baby wipe. You want something dry. So I took a um, paper towel. Yes, it's called a paper towel, Carol. And I just keep going over it. I wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle it because I love that look. And I put it through. I think I had to change it around because you want that. See, take it out. You want that portion on the front. Look at that, so that you have the two colors, the gray and the pink, when you run that through the back. Took out my glue dots. Oof, you must be getting tired watching this. I'm, my mouth is getting dry, but I have my Coca-Cola beside me, and it's just after lunch right now. I have to go feed Hunter some lunch. He's being so good. I can't even hear him. And, um, yeah, he's watching a movie. Um, so I put the glue dots underneath the ribbon you know, to make sure everything sticks. I don't want it coming apart. So just take your little dots and put them. And here I'm adding pearls. Here's another thing. If the pearls are bigger, I will add hot glue underneath. And this worked out perfect because my hot glue gun is a detailed glue gun. So I'm able to just get a little bit of glue. And there you have that. And if you turn it around, you get an extra look because you have the script on the back portion. So now we're going to work on, let's see, I think the front. I wanted to add a heart. I wanted to add another heart to it. So I thought, oh, there's my cards. I give out my cards all the time. When I go to Michael's, I say, hi, how are you? I have a YouTube channel. Would you mind uh, checking it out? I'm just going to take one of my business cards here. And they do, and I love it. So I added one to this card as well, with my daughter-in-law's permission, of course. So I'm going to check everything out just to see, okay, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do there? And here is where I thought I'm going to put that, right in the center, not underneath. I don't want anything. That just looks like, yeah. You're going to put that little tag, both tags in. I have a tag for her to write on. 
that uh, I put in as well, but I did that after the fact, so I don't think it's in this video. But I ended up putting the glue dots behind the lettering there. You can see a little bit of it as a shadow, but not too bad. Then I add, I did another card with no, just the edges done in pink and gray. I put a black ribbon through it so it was different, so she could write her sentiment. I added that later on. I didn't think of it when I was creating, but at the last minute on Saturday before she took it, I, I added that extra because I thought, oh, she's got to write something on here, so I added an extra tag. Now I want to do a shaker, but I'm not using those. I decided to go with beautiful, beautiful seed beads. These are Martha Stewart seed beads you get at Michael's. I think you get 24 or 32 of them, and I always use my coupons on that. It's in a box. Oh, there's the die. I, I made sure I showed this in there. I'll leave a link to it as well. So, um, yeah, so here we go. I'm going to add an actual shaker on the front, a heart shaker. Uh, I thought of using these. Here's some more little things I took out but didn't use. I set them aside. You know, there's the Spellbinder die that I used, and um, it's beautiful, really. You can't go wrong with Spellbinder dies. Yeah, leave the card there, Carol. <laughs> Don't take that away. you got to go and get it. Now, I wanted to add a shaker uh, element. I wanted to see the script, but I wanted to use seed beads. I wanted to use the pink and the gold. And I had the exact color pink in my seed beads and gold. It was beautiful. So I took out, uh, this is actually uh, a Stampin' Up! die set from way back in the day. You had the big scallop heart and then you had all the other hearts. And I like it because it's kind of Kitty Wonkus here. You have more of the heart on the top than you do when you come down. Love that look. I don't know if that was intentional, but it really, it must have been because this is one uh, size and then one size down, you know. So I took that gold paper and uh, this is hard cardstock, you know, thick, not hard, but thick cardstock in the gold. I just love it. And I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And of course, we're going to add two. I, I run the largest of the hearts through with acetate. I buy the sleeves, you know, the page protectors. It's not acetate. I get it at, it. well, it's acetate, but it's sleeve protectors is what they call it. It's nice and thick, really thick. And I have something with me in thickness, isn't it? You want to have the two pieces of acetate, one on the bottom that you will just put double-sided tape around it and one on the lift so that you can put your seed beads in there. And I love seed beads on a shaker. So here I'm just going to show you how I do this. You want that bottom piece right there just with, I use the orange double-sided tape. It's so silly thin. It's so crazy thin, that orange tape you can get. It's super sticky. So I added it to the first cutout piece of acetate and I put it on the bottom here. This is where the seed beads will rest and it'll move around beautifully. You know, you've got that nice slick surface. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the, um, the orange tape. I think it's sixteenth of an inch. It's the tiniest one I have in the orange and I put it all the way around. Now, uh, you have to be really careful on this. I did speed it up a bit, but I only want it right directly on the outer edge so that when I turn it around, you're not going to see it with the die, which you're not. Look how thick that heart is on the right that I just covered up. <laughs> I told you to look at it, and then I covered it up. And see how nice that is going around there, the orange tape, it really is. Then I take it off in one swoosh. Then I'm going to seat it down on an angle in between the die cuts. Gorgeous. Then when I die cut the other one, I'm going to just use my ATG half inch going around here. You don't have to be so particular. You just want to make sure that the acetate is seated behind there. So put that on right like that. And there you have it. You're on your way to a shaker. Now I'm going to use the really thin, um, I'm not going to use the scotch. I don't think I used the scotch roll. I think I used the Doris thin strips on this one because you are going to, I mean, you can cut it with the scotch 
uh, roll, nice and thin, either or. But the Doris, I always say I love these since I bought them. They are 33 pieces of one eighth inch strips. And uh, it's by Doris. I'll leave the link. So I took a baby wipe. You just, and this is an alcohol wipe to make sure that my acetate is free from any marks because I think I got a little bit of glue on there. But the acetate, you know, you get them in little packets at the dollar store. You get a hundred of the alcohol ink pads at your dollar store. My dollar store, there's the Doris little uh, strips, really thin. And it's at my dollar store when nothing's a dollar. I have to always make sure I say that because my dollar store has nothing in it for a dollar. Yes, just saying. I'm just going to throw that out there like I always do, right? Now I'm going to go around the edges with this thin tape. If you take the top portion off, you know, the peel portion off, uh, it'll go around much quicker. But I didn't want my hands to be all sticky, so I just took it easy and went around the edges. Then I have to get the seed beads on there. Now, you want to make sure, because I'm going to add pink and gold to the center, these little boogers go all over the place. Yes, here's all the colors of the seed beads. I think there's 32 actually. Uh, there's quite a few of them. They're made by uh, Martha Stewart and they're in Michaels and use your coupon. Get a big box of seed beads. So there's the gold. Oh yeah, I'm being super, super, the lighter pink I think went with it than the dark pink. So here you have it. I'm just getting my alcohol white going around the edges. I'm going to zoom it. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. And uh, be very careful they don't escape. Put down your, there, look at that. We did it. Shaker. Woohoo. Yes. And then just take your alcohol wipe on any of your shiny surface cardstock and it'll take any markings off as well as your acetate, of course. And it's an easy way to clean it up. But something was missing here. It was just too plain. So I had to go into my stash and get out the um, stickers again, and I'm going to go around the edges. See how nice that is? Oh yeah, I'm looking at it, putting that in. You know, this is the final portion to your creation. You should be proud of what you do. Now, once I go around, there's the seed beads, and that box I got at the dollar store, where nothing's a dollar. I think it was $1.50 actually for that box. It has a nice clip on the front. And it's perfect for those seed beads. I store them upside down so I don't see the lids. I just see the color of the seed beads. I took my Stampin' Up! Punch and took the large heart. And then I went to my stash with all my letters that I had. You know, the sticky, I don't know what they call these things. Thickers. Thicker stickers. And I used to buy these up like crazy. And I put Mrs. To Be in script. I thought that would be nice so yeah and then if you take your pokey tool you're pretty certain you can lift it up but you don't want to lift it up too many times because of the you want to have the stickiness in there so this set I got at Michaels has a whole lot of different fonts maybe three different ones that's not a whole lot but still look at the beautiful script on these nice and thin so I put misses and then in the center I put two and then B on the bottom and there you go. I ripped a little piece of the paper off, so I just add a little bit of Copic marker on it, and you will never know. So I put the T.O. and then to be, Mrs. To be, and that is going right underneath the heart that says created especially for you by Carol Held on the vellum. And I'm really happy with that. I end up putting that flat down. I don't raise it up. I want it to be flat. So I'm pretty sure I just use my ATG on that. And I, isn't that pretty, Mrs. To Be? And that's for the wedding shower portion. And there you have it. I thought of putting it there, but too much, too much. You can see, I made sure I put this in for you. That's too much. You don't want to take away from the shaker. So there's where it's going, right in the center of the upper portion of the card. Yeah, I go back. <laughs> no, Carol, it doesn't look good there. No matter how you put it. It's too much. You have too much elegance on the front to add two hearts. And it was going to cut, up, cut off my LDRS creative die that I absolutely love. 
And uh, yeah, so I chose just to put it in the center. I'm not sure if I used liquid glue or my ATG, but I stuck it down right there. I'm pretty sure it's the ATG, yeah, because I'd probably see oozing white stuff if I put liquid. So I stuck with that. I went back to my matchy-matchy stickers, and I went around the edge. I think it takes away from the... It adds more elegance. It takes away from the sharp edge of the heart on the gold piece, which I find beautiful. That's why I like these stickers for $2.50. I think that's what it is, $2.25 or $2.50. You can't beat it. You get about 100 strips of this stuff, and it all has different patterns to work with, and it's gorgeous. So I take my time. I go around the edges, and you can see it's pretty. It really is. It adds to... Um, yeah, stick it up. And I went around the inside, like it would be the outside of the heart, but the inside of the actual sticker with my glossy accent with the detailed end on it so that this would not come up. Because stickers do come up and they do dry out. It doesn't matter how fantastic your stickers are, you want to add a little bit of glue. And I find glossy accents with a detailed tip works perfect. I just run it nicely around the edge and it's not going to move once it dries. Isn't that pretty? And that's the stickers there. And then I thought I'm going to add the same thing around the heart. So that's what I did. I took that off because you want to add it in. Um, yeah, I went to the right and worked my way to the left. I don't know why I did that. Isn't that funny? But uh, here we go. It doesn't matter how many you cut off because it has that pretty pattern. So you can match it up. It works out fine. And uh, yeah, so we are finishing up there. And then we're going to move on. Can you believe this was pretty long, wasn't it? But then we're going to move along to the envelope. And I'm going to talk about the envelope here for a minute while I'm doing this. Um, I chose to do a larger envelope. And I'll tell you why. I wanted to put tissue paper around this card and I wanted to add that 12 by 12 Eiffel Tower and you saw that that is pretty big so I thought okay I'll use the top of the Eiffel Tower to fold over on my envelope so that you get the whole Eiffel Tower and it's just yeah hearts gold hearts it's beautiful it's raining gold hearts here so while I'm creating this and I'm showing you how I did that and I still did add a little bit of glossy accents on the inside of each design of the sticker, just a dot. Dot, 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 and it dries. Hold your sticker down. Here's the tag for the back and there's the heart on the front. There's the seed beads going crazy. So once I take a check on each of these, I add the little bit of glossy accent. See how I'm doing that on top of every pearl so that it drips down and holds my pearls into place. Because going inside of an envelope back and forth, because it is dimensional and it's sticking up, you want to make sure that you add that. I'm just showing you there, trying to get it zoomed in for you. You can see how much the dots are just a touch on top. And that will seep down and adhere your pearls to that. Now at my stationery store, I buy Tyvek mailing envelopes. These are the large mailing envelopes, like the yellow ones you get. And I'm going to seep down on top of the Teflar. I'm having a sticky mess here, look at me. But it works out. I put the Eiffel Tower all the way down on the corner. I cut it off. Then I fold it over on the Tyvek. As you can see there, it's going to have a lid that I'm going to, you know, fold over the Eiffel Tower. And this is going to be the front. You want to make sure you glue all the edges. And I'm going to cut it on a slant so that it has this fold over section. I take my bone folder and, like I said, white tie back. That way it doesn't rip. It, you couldn't tear this if you wanted to. Then I'm going to seat this paper right over top of the other side so that you have, you know, a pretty front, a pretty back. I'm going to do that with my uh, five inch or six inch, I can't remember what this is, 
and I'm going to use the double-sided roll so that I know it's going to stick on there and put it on the back so I have the Eiffel Tower on the front. I have the beautiful cafe images on the back and then I'm going to grab that uh, yeah, and I did it in the middle. I didn't want to go off to the side. I wanted to make sure it was uniform on each side. I cut it down, and then I go into my stash and get my rose-colored ribbon again. It's going to match the card, right? So there you have it. And then I am going to add double-sided tape because when I cut it there to make it even, I cut through the tie back. So I just put double-sided. And then I want to have this beautiful LDRS creative um, die. It's so beautiful, that gorgeous die. I want to have it as at the end, but you, I wanted to double it up. So I ran it through my um, Xyron 2 inch right here to put on the back. You want stability. This is going to open and close, open and close. So I made sure that I added one to the front, one to the back. And I'm going to use, um, yeah, I'm going to make sure everything is tied down with double-sided tape. Nothing is going to, you know, when you're opening this. Now, I put the gold behind where you open it up. When the person opens it up, I want them to be able to see gold. So I'm going to tape the black down to match the opening. So I think this is kind of nice, just cutting it off. I really did like the size of this Tyvek envelope. It is, um, I don't know if it's 10 by 12 inch, but it's the same size as a yellow manila folder that you get for mailing out documents. So here you have it. I'm having the black. Then I'm going to seat the gold sheet underneath. So when the person is taking the card in and out, you're going to see gold underneath that black flap. Now, I slowed this down to show you that I did Mountain Valley folds on the tissue paper just to give it that elegant look in the center. So you just fold your tissue back and forth, back and forth. I'd say about an inch on each Mountain Valley. I'm making sure that when it tucks in, I'm going to have um, enough room when I, you know, I really should have put a gusset on the fold flap, but I didn't. But I'm going to use Velcro circles that I have in my stash to close it. So it is going to seat nicely. So here I want to make sure that all the edges are seated down with double-sided tape. My Coke has a place. <laughs> you don't want to lose that, right? And I'm cleaning up my masks. I don't know why I kept this in the edit. I guess so I could have a little gab. Isn't that pretty? I really do think it is a beautiful envelope. I mean, you didn't have to do anything with it. That was in my stash. And I'm quickly just showing you here how I put the little bit of glossy accents. This is the little detailed bottle that I use. I'll try and find that. You get three in one set, I think. And it just came together. Pink, black, Eiffel Tower, gold, pearls, you know, the corners, the gold corners, everything was exactly how I wanted it. And on the envelope, I took out this pink ribbon. That's why I kept this in there. I didn't want to do this. For some reason, it was the exact thin ribbon, but it didn't have a place. It really didn't. So I put it away, and I'm just kind of giving you a close-up of the tissue that's folded uh, back and forth, back and forth, mountain fold valley, mountain fold valley. And it does give it an elegant look when you are giving a gift. So here we go. We're going to add quickly the beautiful ribbon, one at a time. So it has two um, roses, and they're uh, wonky, like they're not straight across. The roses are on a slant. So it makes it nice. All you have to do is fold it over like this. You have the exact same element as on your card. On your envelope, you have the Tyvek, so it's not going anywhere. You get those Tyvek sheets. I got a hundred per box at the stationery store, so I wait for them to go on sale and then grab them. Uh, I use them a lot when I'm sending things out, especially if I want to send out some stash to somebody when I'm sending a card. The Tyvek works beautifully, and Tyvek works well. Here's the Stampin' Up Oval Punch. 
I did a half punch on here so that you could slide, you know, you have a place to open up the envelope. And I was thinking of putting the same uh, paper down inside when you open it up. But then when I saw the gold, oh yeah, I had to do it. I took hot glue and you want to make sure it's a quick go because you're sliding that in and putting it down. And there you have it. There's the front. So pretty. I'm just cutting everything off there. And I still want to work with that pink ribbon. No, I don't want to work with it. Carol, get away from there. Just leave it plain. That's kind of nice. Tuck it all in, tuck your gold in there. Just make sure everything is glued down and you have yourself a beautiful envelope, I think. I thought it looked a little bare right here. So what I did is uh, I put this pink on, didn't like it, tore it off. That's the beauty of using hot glue, tears right off. And I grabbed my uh, green. This is that moss green in the LDRS Creative dye that I use all the time. I just love having this available on my desk, on my island to use at any time. Isn't it pretty? So when you open it up, you have the look of the same beautiful dye here. It's very feminine. It's very Paris, I think. It's just beautiful with this fallen drop. I have to get the name of that. I don't have it out in front of me. But look when you open it up. <laughs> There's something about that ribbon I want to put in there, but I didn't. I didn't use it. So I have to think, okay, I need to have Velcro. So I went to my stash and I grabbed some round Velcro strips and put them on the inside. I got those at Michael's in the sewing section, just little round Velcro. And don't trust them without putting hot glue underneath. Okay, here I'm making sure, okay, is this going to go in? And I'm, where do I have to put the Velcro? That's what I'm deciding right here as I put that in. Isn't it pretty? tuck it down and then my decision to put six or seven of these uh, Velcro strips. You want to make sure that the top and the bottom, you know, you don't put one bottom on one side. I did use uh, hot glue because that's going to be opening and closing and you can see how many I use there, six or seven going across and those are in the sewing section like I said at Michael's. So there you have the strip on the top then I'm going to put the strip for the bottom on top of the strip so that I can put the hot glue right across and then fold the flap and it will flap to the other side and be in perfect position. So then put your glue all the way across, fold the flap, and then when you open it up, make sure it's dry. Yeah, I'm making sure it dries for a second. And then you have the, bo the bottom to it in the right spot. And don't trust the glue on these. Even though they seem super sticky, I always make sure I add. Now, I did them two layers high. I didn't like the way it was down to the bottom. I raised it up with another um, sticky one, you know, so they're too high. Yes. It just helped with the seating. Put glue on it, and it was perfect. So I put one strip on, and then I just added another strip to give it the height for when this is folded over. Because I didn't put a gusset, I want to have the height on the flap. And there you have it. It looks perfect. And look at my little Paris kitten. Isn't she cute? I'll name her Fufu. When I think of Paris, I think of Fufu. There you go. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, aren't I? I want the lady that gets this for a shower to know you have to pull it up. So I grab my thickers and I grabbed it in gold glitter, of course, and I put the word pull. So she knows she has to pull the flap open. And there you have it, my friends, my Paris themed card and envelope with a shaker, with all those elements, all in one. And I appreciate you taking the time to view this. I know it's rather long, but you can do it in little 10 minute sections. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't done a long video in a long time, right? In a long, long time. So I thought this was only adequate. There you have it. Pull and pull it open and you have your wonderful card inside. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for your comments. They make my videos so special. And um, welcome to my new subscribers. I sure appreciate you. Now I'd like you to have a blessed week 
and I will see you on the next tutorial. Please enjoy the pictures. Take care, everybody.